the RF cans and the Hamlin radios are very problematic. They have uh, mica capacitors sandwiched in um, the bottom of the IF uh, just above the legs. I'm going to take this one apart and show you how it works. Now I'm going to pull it apart. Uh, just slide it out with one hand while I hold the camera with the other one. It just slides right out like so. Now you see the big tuning slugs there? Normally this slug is run down to about, uh, let's see, see if I can approximate the position of it. The tuning position is right about there on the lower slug and the top one I've got it backed off. So the, 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 the one on my left, that's about where the tuning slug goes when it's in tune. So you don't want to leave it way down like, like this one right here. If you leave it like that and then try to tune the IF with external capacitors, it's not going to work right. The sandwich capacitors are in that slot. You see the slot? I'm going to point to it with my finger. See that slot right there? What you've got to do, you've got to get that brass ferrule out. I'm going to do it with a deburring tool. And it's going to push out through the top. So what I want you to do, I want you to screw this bottom slug. I want you to screw all the way up as far as you can get it. And by the way, uh, these slugs have a center to them. I'm going to shut the camera off and uh, remove that top slug and then come back and show it to you. Now when you remove that slug, these legs are going to try to flare out. You see them bouncing a little bit. When you remove that slug up there, you are um, taking some stability out of the uh, plastic. You see this uh, clamp right here? This clamp is the only thing that holds those two sides together, and that's a fulcrum. So when you pull that slug out, you've uh, taken your weight off the, the fulcrum. Let's see. I'll turn it around. If I pinch this, you see the side wants to come out there on the bottom now. If you let it come out too far, you're going to break the little wires. The little tiny. See the little tiny copper wires there? They're very small. I think you can see one there. If you let that leg come out too far, you're going to break that wire. So uh, be very careful with that. Okay, I'm going to put the uh, slug back in it. After, I'm going to show it to you first. The slug has, you see the center on it? That little stake goes down inside the, uh, the IF. It goes down inside the coil form. You see it's threaded. And it has a square slide on the top. If you get this crank sided inside the uh, can there, you're going to bust that little uh, nub off. And, uh, and then this IF is no good until you replace this thing. Um, I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way they're made. So be very careful that you don't push on this slug with the tuning wand and cause it to uh, get crank sided. And if it does, it's going to bust that off. I've busted one, so I know what it feels like. Now... There are tuning wands that fit in this slot right here. And uh, let's see if I can do this. And it's supposed to fit in that square hole. You see how it does? Let's uh, see if I can get my shadows out of here. Fits right in that square hole. You do not want a lot of slack there. If you have too much slack, you're going to have a problem. So you can actually grind these uh, these points off so that they're a little broader. Let's get down here and let you look at that one. You see it's fairly broad. Fairly thick. Now here's one that I made. You see it's even thicker and that's even better. It fits perfectly right into that slot right there. And that's what you want. Just a perfect fit. Don't try to turn it with a little screwdriver. All you will do is damage that slot. 
It's a very soft material, and if you do that, you've ruined it. This adjustment tool, I ground it round on the end, and then uh, ground the uh, ground the shape uh, on the uh, bench grinder. And what this is is uh, you probably recognize it. It's the plastic piece out of a tire gauge. Plastic piece out of a tire gauge. It works just perfect. Um, but it has to slip down into the hole of the IF. There's the IF, and it has to go in that hole right there. It's got to go down into the slug, and it's got to be able to turn it. So there we go. Just perfect, and it's going to fit that hole just right. If the shank is any bigger, it's not going to go into that ferrule there. So, I'm going to turn the camera off, uh, remount everything, put it in the vise, and I'm going to show you how we're going to drill out the uh, ferrule. I'm not going to actually drill the ferrule out. Uh, I'm going to use this deburring tool on my Dremel. As you see, this is a Dremel Multipro variable speed. You need to be able to slow it down a little bit with the variable speed. Uh, this deburring tool uh, you can buy. It's uh, let's see. Here's the book. Uh, there are the tools, and I believe it's at number one thirty-one, right there. I think it's the number one thirty-one. It is a quarter-inch diameter, and it looks just like it. There's another one that's uh, five sixteenths, which may be a little too big. There's another one which is. Um, number 141 that's a quarter inch also and it'll probably work you don't want to go over quarter inch and I have the uh, I have the IF uh, in a vise uh, I have it uh, squeezed uh, between the jaws of the vise you can see the ferrule sticking up right there now what I'm going to do I'm going to take the deburring bit and I'm going to it's actually larger than the ferrule that's inside. It's larger than, than the shank of the ferrule. I'm going to deburr this down to the point where I can get the shoulder off of it. I'm not going to drill all the way through. So here we go. You want to do this a little at a time because if you just hold it on there, what's going to happen is it's going to heat up and melt the plastic. So I've actually pushed it out. I'm going to hold my finger down on the bottom so that it doesn't fall out. And I'm going to release the vise and pull it out. Okay, uh, I got the ferrule out, and there it is. And uh, it is actually inside of a little plate. I'm going to pull it out, and there are the two pieces. Now inside the eye of can, you see this little plastic plate came out. And now it is revealing the mica, and the legs, you see this leg here is, uh, is an L-shaped piece of metal. And it holds that mica in place. Now I'm going to have to... Uh, find a tool here in a moment. With this little tool I think that I can push that mica out to the other side, turn it around and hopefully grab it with my finger and slide one piece out two pieces out and that's all that was in this one. Some of them have actually three pieces of mica in there. 
Now the next operation is going to have to be because these uh, these legs will touch since the mica is not in there anymore. We're going to have to cut these uh, almost halfway down to keep them from touching. Just just enough so that they can't touch when they put it back together. All right, I've got a piece of a pair of side cutters here, so I'm going to clip one of these. Just be real careful because the wires are still attached. Okay, that was one of them. This one actually has a split leg on it, so I have to clip it twice. All right, now they cannot touch anymore. Do you see that? Now what has to happen is, when we put it back together, we're going to slide the plastic back in. We're going to slide this plate back on top of it, but first I want to flatten out the plate on the vise. Okay, I have flattened out the little plate, and there it is. It had uh, bent ends on it before. Okay, let's see, what is the next step here? Uh, next step, I'm going to have to remove what's remaining of that brass ring by prizing it out. Okay, I have that ring prized out. There it is. Now the next operation is I have to take a bit and I've got to chamfer this hole a little bit because when we stick the uh, ferrule back in there we want to be able to bend down the uh, ends a little bit so I'm going to take a drill bit we're going to run the drill bit in here and by hand we're going to chamfer this hole enough to make a ledge on it and this drill bit I think is a let's see says it's a quarter inch bit now for the next step uh, I've, uh, I've made a little uh, a little tool here out of some bent aluminum. I'm going to stick this ferrule in there. From the back side. Just like so. There it went. Okay now. While it's like that, I'm going to stick it in the vise. Clamp it. And, uh, and then I'm going to slot it two different ways with my uh, Dremel cutoff wheel. I'll show you how to do that. Now I've clamped this device into the vise and it's sticking up. It can't turn because I have it pushed down. And I'm going to take uh, this uh, Dremel cutoff wheel uh, which is the thin one, not the thick one. We don't have to go all the way down. Okay. Now we're going to loosen the clamp, turn it halfway, clamp it again, and we cut it again. Now I have uh, reinserted the plastic plate and the, let me see if I can show you a little better. This is the little plastic plate that came out of it. We turn it so that the flared in or the uh, edge it goes up because we put the brass plate back in it here. We slip the ferrule back down in it and what's poking out the bottom now where we flared the plastic, uh, we didn't flare, we chamfered the plastic. Now what I'm going to do is stick this in a jig in the vise and I'm going to bend these ears back down to hold everything together. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. I've stuck a metal rod into the vise which is uh, the right size for allowing me to slip the IF can, the IF transformer, over it. 
I'm going to take this little screwdriver. I'm going to hold the transformer down and I'm going to take and I'm going to push these flanges over. Okay. I just have to hold it tight, push down while I'm doing that. There's two of them. I'll turn it the other way around and we'll do the other two. You see we've uh, we've bent those over so that now everything is fitted back together, everything is tight, the legs are clamped in and they don't they don't wallow around and uh, I finished repairing this IF now the only thing that's left to do is to put it back together put it inside the radio I want to make sure that I didn't break these wires first I'll check that with the ohmmeter I'm gonna move this back down to its correct position which is right about oh, right about in that area there so that we're not too far out of tune and we're going to put external capacitors on these legs to match the capacitors that were in there I think there were 100 and 300 you have to check the diagram okay so that's done okay so that IF transformer is back together and so what we've managed to do is to take the uh, mica slabs out now I'm going to show you one other problem now this is a T5. This is the first IF that came out of uh, an HQ110A. Now you notice it does have capacitors in there and they're permanent. Uh, you shouldn't have to change those. They're good little micro caps. So the bottom is built a little different from the one we just worked on. And the coils are a little different too. But the problem I had was you see this wad of material this is a cloth that was impregnated with some kind of sticky stuff and it was wrapped around the IF inside the can it was uh, it was a cloth wrap at one time and it was tightly wrapped stuck back in the can with the wrap on it and if you look down inside the can can you see where it was all stuck 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 so here's what I had to do I took uh, two pieces of sheet metal there's one there's two and I took the first one and on the side where the legs are it doesn't have this little uh, hold down tab I stuck this down beside it and ran it down in there At least I think I did. I ran it down in there like so and was able to run it all the way down and uh, and it got that uh, glued material off the side. This thing would never have come apart had I not done that. Now on the side that has the little tabs it was stuck also. So what I did on that side I have a shorter piece here or a thinner piece not quite as wide and uh, I stuck it down like so let's go to the other side see if I can do it I stick it in there all the way down and then side to side like this so that I could uh, get that uh, glued crap out of there after I did I was able to remove the thing successfully